Hi everybody, this is Ellie. I know that it's been a while and it's so nice to be back. This is my stationary stockpile challenge video for February. If you're new here, the stationary stockpile challenge is a collab that I do with Dakshina and we have a monthly theme and we invite you to use any stickers, washi, ephemera, anything you've been hoarding to create something for your planner or journal pages. I am going to make an A6 dashboard for my Hobonichi Memory Keeper, and the theme for February is red and pink. I will put all the monthly themes in the description box below, and please feel free to use the hashtag stationary stockpile challenge if you do join in at any point this year. So I'm just going through one of my sticker albums and pulling out any stickers I think will fit this month and then I'm going to create my dashboard on a piece of clear vellum that I've cut down to A6 size. While I do that, I am going to chat and catch up with you guys because I've missed you. I cannot believe that it's been, what, about three months since I last posted a video? Guys, I did not plan to take a break and believe me, whatever skills I had have definitely gotten rusty I apologize in advance, at some point half of my dashboard isn't even in frame, but I promise at the end of the video you can see the whole thing again. Coming back to the break though, for those of you who don't know, I am a supplier substitute teacher and in October I took a kindergarten contract. It was lovely, it got extended a couple of times and just ended at the end of January, but it was also incredibly busy and I just couldn't keep up. So thank you for those of you who checked in on me, connected here or on Instagram, and for all of you for sticking around. I really did miss it here. I'm also happy to report that I had a wonderful time in the teaching contract. I was hesitant. I had no idea what it would look like going back into the classroom. I haven't been back since the pandemic started, and I learned a lot. Things are a little bit different but I had a group of 28 kinders. Yes, that's 28 four and five year olds. And I had a teaching partner and we also had a support staff in our classroom. And it was wonderful. It was a lovely and a bright group of kids and I really looked forward to going in every day. Of course, it was also incredibly exhausting. I love the kids, but 28 of them is a lot and they're doing so much learning socially and emotionally that they need the constant support and a whole lot of movement. So I don't even have a desk when I'm in a kindergarten classroom because I am on the go all the time. And I swear, if I had a dollar for every time the kids called out my name, I would have a whole shelf full of Evander Specs and Jillios right now. This contract ended up being a great learning opportunity for me. I have a lot of experience in kindergarten. It's my favorite, even with the questions and the exhaustion. It's just so incredibly rewarding. But I was really nervous about teaching virtually should that become an option. And it turned out in Ontario after the Christmas break, we did teach virtually for a couple of weeks. And I am not tech savvy, guys. I, This is pretty much it. This YouTube channel is the most I've ever quote unquote stretched my wings. And I'll be honest, I'm filming with my phone and I edit right on it. So they haven't stretched very far. But I needed to learn and I did. And again, I didn't do anything extreme, but I got more comfortable with Google Classroom, Google Meet, Google Slides. And I kept my kinders engaged, which is the most that I could have hoped for. I'm not saying that learning remotely is developmentally appropriate. And right now, the world that we live in, the measures that we're taking to keep safe, it is a reality. And I'm really happy that I had that experience. And at least now moving forward, I'm more comfortable should I ever need to teach that way in the future. And now that the contract is over, I really miss it. Unfortunately, it didn't end as I would have hoped. 
We had a tentative end date from me and the principal was great about communicating that. But I'm not sure what happened on the school board's end if the returning teacher didn't get the information in early enough or they were just incredibly slow about processing it. But I didn't find out that I was officially leaving until the day of after school had ended. Luckily, the principal had given me the okay to let my students and their families know the day before because, I mean, we needed to give them some heads up. I just wish I would have had the chance to give them more of an opportunity to talk through the transition, to say my goodbyes, and to have that closure. On top of all this, I was rushing through report cards. Well, I wasn't rushing through them, but... I was doing them, they were incredibly tedious, and they had to be submitted on what ended up being my final day. So that last week was just crazy busy and stressful, but I got through it and I was able to tell my kiddos personally that I was leaving, so I did get to have that. Ideally, it's a much more gradual process with HR communicating that in advance, but it happens, I managed, and here we are. I realized that was a lot about teaching and not about planning, so you might be thinking, how did planning factor into all of that? And the answer is, for a while at the beginning, it didn't. I could not use my bullet journal while I was in the classroom, and I think there's a few reasons for that. First of all, like I already mentioned, I don't have a desk in kindergarten, I am always moving, so there's just not a chance for me to sit down and pull out my planner throughout the day. So I never did. The other thing is that the bullet journal is so open and so flexible, and you guys know I love that. I always count it as my favorite thing about the bullet journal. Yeah, it did not work for me in the classroom. I needed something much more structured. I even tried to create spreads ahead of time, like weekly overviews, so that the layout was all there. But for whatever reason, it was just not clicking with me and I didn't force it. I honestly didn't have time to. So what ended up happening for the most part is I had a bunch of lists on post-it notes stuck to the front of my clipboard that I used for documentation in the classroom. And that was the extent of my planning. In terms of personal planning, I wasn't really doing anything outside of, of teaching. So it all just kind of fell by the wayside. And that's okay. That's a reminder that our planners are here to serve us and not the other way around. The more I tried to force it, the more frustrated and overwhelmed I got. And it reminded me that I want to use my planners as a tool to help me stay on track, to help me feel productive, and as something that I enjoy. So I set it aside until I had the time to revisit what exactly it was that I needed. And this is the perfect example of realizing that it is very unlikely that one planner or one system will meet your needs through every season of your life. When I was at home, the bullet journal's flexibility was inviting and fun. When I was in the classroom, it was overwhelming and stressful. So I went through a bunch of ideas for 2022. If you'll remember, my original plan was to go with a standard size. I had those, I still have those Pebble Stationery Co. inserts set up like the weeks I was going to use that as a bullet journal with a slightly more structured component but I wanted something a little bigger I think I wanted something that felt more square and that also would lay more flat I didn't want anything on strings if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I've started the year in the B6 Wonderland 222 Dated Planner. I went with this one for a few reasons. I like the B6 size. I'm not super familiar with it, but I have done morning pages in it. 
and I like that it's smaller than A5 but still feels like a good amount of real estate. I also like that this has the week set up in columns. I am a list maker and I prefer that vertical layout. The biggest drawback for me probably was the fact that the weekend is stacked. So instead of Saturday and Sunday each having their own full length column, they are combined one atop the other at the end of the week. That being said, I figured I would give it a try. When I'm teaching, I am working a Monday to Friday week. So I didn't think it would be a huge issue and so far it hasn't been an issue at all. I've realized I don't need to get into super specifics because I do plan on filming a video where I show you how I'm using my Wonderland 222 and how I've set it up. But it's funny because I chose this planner specifically knowing that I would be in the classroom and not knowing how long the contract would last. And now that it's over, I'm obviously back out of the classroom. So I will see how it works for me. But honestly, guys, the guts of my system never changed. They just moved into this new format. So I'm still using my bullet journal key. I just added one new signifier when I was working. I'll show you guys that in that in the video. And it's been great. It has about 70 pages or so, I think at the end, blank pages. So I've started setting up some collections and I also picked up the half year notebook as well. And I figure if I run out of pages in the back of the planner, then I will just continue on in the notebook. Anything like daily logs, notes, anything really. So it's been working really well for me so far as the planner, and I'm also really enjoying it. So I will carry on with that and keep you guys updated. For my journal and memory keeper in 2022, I did downsize. So last year I used the Hobonichi Cousin Avec, and this year I am using the A6 English Techo. So it is the full year version. And I love the Hobonichi Cousin, but it just felt too big and overwhelming at times. So what I did is I got the A6 size and I also got the Hobonichi Weekly Supplement. And I figure if I really miss those vertical weekly spreads where I put in more stickers and have the week at a glance, then I will be able to do it in that little booklet and keep it with my ASICs so it's like its own mini modified cousin. But that being said, because the Wonderland 222 is the vertical weekly overview, I haven't felt the need yet. So we'll see, but my favorite journal that I ever had was my 2019 Hobonichi A6, so I am very happy to be back in it. I also have the five-year Hobonichi. I got it last year, so 2021 was my first year in it, and I was not even the slightest bit consistent. I think three months of consistency and then few sporadic entries and then nothing. I still told myself we're gonna try again this year. Anything is better than nothing. But for some reason I just have a lot of trouble getting into it every day or even every week. I don't mind doing it all in one go but I just haven't been. I think it's more about routine than anything else so I will keep trying. I already have it and I would rather have some sporadic memories than none at all. But my dream, my goal would be to fill it up consistently because when I did start again in January, I have since slowed down, I loved seeing last year's entries and I know I will love it. This is the kind of memory keeping that I love. I'm just not doing it. I don't know guys, but I have that and I also picked up a mega weeks. Do I have a plan for it? No, I try not to be wasteful, but I do find it an incredibly versatile option should the need come up. So it's here on my desk, <laughs> wait, waiting for its time to be called. When I first started this voiceover, I expected I would have to use music to fill in some of the gaps, 
but here we are. I've talked for 15 minutes and I told you I missed you guys. I just want to catch up and I would love to hear how you've been doing, what you're using in 2022. And also if you'd like to see any specific videos from me or anything this year, feel free to leave that in the comments as well. And as far as the dashboard goes, I'm really happy with how it came out. I like the smaller size dashboards because I use smaller stickers and that's my preference. So I've just tipped it in there with some Simply Gilded washi tape. Yes, adulting can be hard, but we're all in it together and stickers help. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sticking around and I'll see you next time.